Hi, I'm Mark. And I'm Ed. And this is a game I designed called Heroes Welcome, uh, where you play goblin merchants in a fantasy dungeon crawling world. We want to give you an overview of how to play, so let's jump right in. This is Heroes Welcome. In this game, there's some heroes, and they leave town for a dungeon, and they battle monsters, and they come back with backpacks full of loot, and we are the merchants who profit by buying their loot, smashing it into raw materials, and then crafting it into powerful artifacts for the monsters that inhabit the dungeon. So there's different kinds of loot. There's magic items, and there's gems, and over the course of the game, I might have a chance to buy some loot uh, from a hero. So for example, I might buy uh, this ruby from this guy for a gold piece, and I might buy uh, this magic armor for a gold piece, and also this weapon. And now I have those two thi those three things. And then on a later turn, I could craft uh, an artifact with them. So here's an orc archer who wants a, a bow made. Um, that bow has to be made from some metal, which is anything uh, anything made out of a magic item, a smashed magic item. And it has to, and two other, any two other things. So I could use these three things. I can smash the, the armor, always smashes into mithril, the weapon always smashes into orc steel, and the ruby always smashes into red stars. So once I have these three, three materials, I can craft uh, a bow for this guy. I'll spend these. And then he's going to pay me five gold, and he's also going to pay me three vorpal pieces. Vorpal pieces are very valuable coins, VPs for short, and whoever has the most vorpal pieces at the end of the game uh, uh, wins. Uh, I can also get a bonus by using my crafting mastery. So I have an orc steel mastery, um, which allows me to get a bonus if I use lots of orc steel when I'm crafting. So for example, if I had, instead of using those materials, I had used three pieces of orc steel um, when I crafted, I would get an extra bonus of, uh, of plus two vorpal pieces um, for crafting this bow. Um, I also, on my character sheet, um, have a special uh, signature skill that allows me to get a bonus for not using a particular material. And in this case, because I didn't use any mithril, I would get another bonus uh, of plus one. So that's the basic uh, way to play the game. You buy loot, you smash it, and then you craft it into uh, artifacts for the monsters. Now, once I've crafted for this guy, uh, the card goes away, and he becomes a monster in the dungeon. The next time the heroes visit the dungeon, they're gonna kill that guy, and we're gonna flip him over to see who levels up. And so this, uh, this elf is gonna level up, uh, and that's important because the amount of, uh, the level of each hero is how much loot they bring back from the dungeon. Uh, potions in their backpacks also count as temporary level ups. So when these guys come back from the, the dungeon, this guy's gonna come back with three loot, and this guy's gonna come back with four loot, and this guy's going to come back with two more loot, in addition to the loot he's already had, right? So every round represents uh, the hero's one trip back from the dungeon on the part of the heroes. Uh, so the game is played in rounds, and each round represents a trip back uh, from the dungeon by the heroes. On your turn, what you'll typically do is you'll move the heroes to a nearby shop, and then you'll do business at that shop, you'll work a shift at that shop, and then you'll close that shop so that nobody else can use that shop this round. And then the next player might, on their turn, move to a different shop, use it, close it, and then so on, each player around the table, uh, until one player decides that they want to end the round and send the heroes back to the dungeon. Each of the shops lets you do a different kind of business with the heroes. So this one lets you buy one piece of loot from each hero for one gold each. Uh, this one lets you buy all the magic items from one hero, but not the gems, for one gold each. Uh, and this one lets you sell potions to the heroes, uh, getting some of your gold back that you may have spent earlier. In addition to the shops, there are also guilds. You can use your turn visiting a guild. Um, they're like shops, but the heroes don't actually go there. Um, when you use a guild, you use its ability, and then you close it. So if I go to this guild, I can level up my Orc Steel Mastery, um, and then I close that guild. Um, also on your turn, you can use your whole turn to craft for one of the customers, uh, one of the monster customers, waiting uh, to have an artifact crafted for them. That uses your whole turn. Uh, and the last thing you can do with your turn is you can call for the end of the round, um, which will uh, send the heroes back to the dungeon. Uh, if someone doesn't want you to end the round, they can give you a piece of loot, uh, and then the round keeps going and it becomes their turn.
If you do end the round successfully, you get a scam card. Um, you're going to start with some scam cards, and they have uh, abilities that you can use on your turn to change what loot the heroes have, or change the monsters, or change the board, or move the heroes around, or do things that uh, make your turn more effective. At the end of the round, the heroes go back to the dungeon, they kill enemies, they collect loot, we take all the close signs off the board, and we reset the board for the next round. At the bottom of the monster deck is the boss monster. When, when someone crafts for the boss monster, it enters the dungeon, and when the heroes go to fight the monster, the game is over. Everyone gets one chance to craft a charm, a trinket, or a talisman with any loot or skills that they have left over, and then most Vorpal Pieces wins the game.